Hey guys, Pigman here. Thank you for watching my YouTube. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button right down here. Put him down. We got an hour, man. We got to find Eric's hog. We got to get these guys packed in the big bus and back to the airport so nobody misses their flight. Looks like his track right here. His track there, track that looks like he might have turned. He may have went right there where Matt is. He stood like he stood right there. That's the same. Hey, that's the same track that I've been looking at. We're 150, 200 yards into this pig. I ain't got no blood, and I can tell you that this pig at times is not only walking, but he is running. At this point, guys, we're doing, we're tracking, but we're looking, we're doing a body search, and uh, didn't take very long. Her dap start screaming. Here he is. Here he is. Put yourself where I am and here when somebody would say, here he is, here he is, that means, uh, that don't mean he's over here, he's over here. That means here he is, here he is, that means he's on his damn feet. So I come around and all I got is a Taurus 9mm, man, I'm going to be straight up with you. And uh, Eric's got his bow, we get around there and depth, there he is, there he is. So Eric's like, I said, dude, you want to shoot him? And uh, he said, of course, like I was crazy or something. He had to shoot through some brush to get that second air in him and he busted out of that brush like a quail. And if you put the heat on them pretty hard, they know something dangerous is after them and their first instinct is to stop and fight. And if he stops to fight, I'm gonna get a, another bullet into him or Eric's gonna get another air in him. And uh, Matt's like, Piggy's over here, he's over here. As Soon as I come into the frame, I see these guys, I look over to my right, there's a the hog. I take two steps forward towards him. Just as I get the gun, just at his feet, full blown charge. That's what you're talking about. You, Damn. Wanted, you wanted to see it, you just saw it. My, yeah. I killed him. If I hadn't brained him, I was done. I didn't have a choice. Good job. That's how the pig does it. Look, dumped the clip. He knew we was coming and he turned to fight. He comes straight at us. Oh man, that was a charge. I had to, I shot him that far away. I stepped to the side and shot him right between the eyes. That's great. You see him. We got two arrows in that pig, both in the kill zone. You still came we with We stole a from Jube, I took one for the team. Jube. I heard the bullets, I hit the ground. I, <laughs> the clip, man. I can tell you, I've been bluff charged a lot. The pig that I just shot in the face was absolutely on no bluff charge run. Bang. And he just falls and slides, and then, you know, I kind of lost it. Bow, 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 bow. I dumped a clip, baby. When the chips are down, I will skin that smoke wagon. Big casino. Wham! If I'd have had a chew of, of uh, Levi Gear, I'd have given him the Josie Wales. I don't even remember seeing the orange tip of this site. All I know is I, I think I had the gangster going. <laughs> I was, I'll be honest, I was running and moving and shooting. Running and gunning. I wasn't standing still and burned him down like a big professional hunter. But when he went down, he dropped and slid. And then I just, of course, come down the side for safety and just sprayed him from front to back. But uh, where was you at, man? Me, I, I was right behind you. Uh, I want to clear this up right away. Matt was filming. Eric had a hold to Matt's backpack. So Matt was not only filming freehand, but he had 200 pounds of Eastman on his back jerking his pack around, trying to get behind him and use him as a shield. So uh, anyway, one of the greatest hunts I've ever been on. Eric was excited, but look, now it's time to shuffle them on down the road, put them in the big rig, and now for me and Matt to get back up in the tree, get to Box Church, and see if we can't close the deal.
Webster defines Titan as one that's gigantic in size or power, and we take our name seriously. First to the market with independent four-wheel suspension, four-wheel hydraulic brakes, and 47 horsepower. A tubular steel welded frame designed from the ground up using off-road racing technology. A rugged pro box top, onboard charger, and AGM maintenance-free batteries. You won't see this one at the country club. Titan, made to hunt, made to last. Ever wonder what goes on inside the world's fastest, most accurate rangefinder? The target is acquired in the viewfinder, centered within the illuminated reticle. Upon soft touch push button activation, an invisible wavelength of light is emitted through the laser aperture to the target subject. The beam is then reflected back to the proprietary digitally enhanced accuracy engine, which initiates the algorithms to begin calculations. A special TDR elevation declination compensator is simultaneously adjusting the algorithm to measure the true ballistic range to within six inches. And it all happens in the blink of an eye. RX-1000i, simply the world's fastest, most accurate rangefinder. This episode of Loop Bold's Pigman the Series is brought to you by Bear Archery, Hornady, Trophy Ridge, Carbon Express, Lewis Machine and Tool, Gunslip Pro, Titan, Grim Reaper, Yeti, and by Loophold, America's Optics Authority. Main thing, guys, first uh, item of business was get everybody back safe and on time. Not only did we get them back on time, we stopped and got them a cheeseburger and got them back on time. Told them 2 o'clock, we pulled up at 2.01. Sorry about that. Next time, I'll do a little bit better job, Eric and John. Now it's time me and Matt put that back on the bait. Uh, box charge, pull the card on that RCX loophole camera and figure out what's going on. Pigs are coming in. Wind is perfect and it's time for us to get in the tree. Uh, been entirely too much killing going on that I ain't involved in it other than self-defense. Back to box charge. Uh, I don't know. I'm ready to try the inch and three quarters tonight simply because we're elevated a little bit and 13.7, uh, 16.4 feeders 33 so at that kind of range with this anarchy uh, I can push an inch and three quarter I'm just checking the plate just waiting game now you know sitting there feeds on the ground but I tell you what I like about this thing these pigs will damn near have to crawl up a tree to wind us we got a straight east wind and uh, I just had that feeling and here they come man I mean heard the brush rustling and uh, all I needed one to do is stick his head out and I was about to burn him started popping out sal sal pig 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 i'm thinking man i saw I already asked matt i mean what do you think the big brown sal and i said wait a minute wait a minute i said that black hog in the back that's a boy sure was about a two 215 started coming in and i said that's we made our mind up right then that's the pig we was gonna shoot he's out in front of the, working his feet and that's all part of the showing out process man big brown tip come right on down the brush line and brought stupid right on in the range he couldn't stand it I mean, he thought he had him a date and some special blend dap working, but uh, we ruined his whole afternoon. Just like shooting a two by six, man. Aaron went in about that far, but I guarantee you, I got both lungs. Dub lung, Jupe. He got the anarchy. She ain't him. He was 16. I almost shot him down there at 35. There is entirely too many pigs in here, man. Wow, Dap, did you see how fat they are? Dap has got them swelled. But they, once they get on that sour corn, but you just see that shows you <clears throat> seven or eight minutes. They cleaned up all these feeders. That's him dying right there. Guaranteed. He didn't even know what happened. We didn't push him. We gave him about 30 minutes or so, and he crawled down there, and uh, we went up around by the creek and up the fence, and, hey, man, it didn't take us very long. I mean, there ain't no need in dragging this out. Pig went about 50, 60 yards total. He was on the ground. Sparky, don't jump up on me now. You done, old partner. See what I'm telling you? I just got through saying that to Eric and them guys. 
This broadhead here started opening, punched inside, and then poof, they fly open and cut a giant hole inside. If that broadhead would have fully deployed on the outside, we would have had three inch penetration. We hit the other side and I guarantee you that arrow is right over there and I guarantee you the broadhead is intact. What a hog, man. I tell you what, it was time for us to get back to hunting and we done it the right way. We knocked a home run all the way around the board. That will not happen very often on Pigman the series. I almost got my hand bit off by a hog. Matt almost got uh, back strained by a pack puller. And I tell you what, right now, man, I, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Free ranging, 215, 225 pound black boar hog from Box Church. What else I gotta say? Hey guys, Pigman here. Thank you for watching my YouTube. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button right down here. Hi out there in fan land, this is Dap. We're going out with the guys from Hornaday. I think you're gonna video yourself, is that right? Yep. And I'm gonna video Lurch over here, so we're looking good. You guys saw that pig last night come in. So now we're out here, day two, I'm in a different blind over here. It is hot down here, man. You're like in a, it's like a hot box in here. It's August, it's miserable. I don't mind it, I'm used to it, but guys from Nebraska, they sweat like pigs, man. I'm gonna go get him, get him out of the way. It was Joe's time and Pig came in, boom, he blowed it down. Big pig just came in. A big pig. We're trying to shoot it on the shoulder. Pick number two, that's a better pig. I tried to shoot it right on the shoulder, but I couldn't, I, it felt good when I broke it. Um, but that's a bigger pig, and it, I saw where it went. We know from what we're already seeing what kind of wound channels these bullets are making in this round. And let's just don't take a chance. That's a big old stinky boar. We're probably not going to want the meat anyway. It's too rank. We just decided to back out. We'll go look for him in the morning. But uh, you had the luck with you, Joe. Good job, man. Hey, man, got our pig. That's okay, big. And Jeremy, unfortunately, you got stuck with Dap that evening. Uh, Joe had all the luck. Neil, too bad you ain't here with us hunting pigs, and you're not under that hat that I'm advertising your business for, man. Huh? Now, next time I'll put you with Matt, and I won't make you set with Dap. Okay, well, let me tell y'all something here. You see that right there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Shot another good one last night, uh, right at dark again on the shoulder. We'll find him this morning and hopefully recover a bullet. They got old Dapmeister here tuning him up. Later, Dap. Give him a raise! guys it's just not happening and uh, they wanted to go set anyway i don't blame them no hogs came in they said okay look now it's time for us to get hooked up here and let's go try to find joe's big hog Nine moose 2015 going down so day five man in the morning the weather's cool and crisp it just feels right and we're getting down to the wire, and the wind's right, so I'm feeling it, man. Feeling pretty damn good. So 
so don't take very long. Lee starts to call. Here a moose. He's like, yeah, you're coming. He heard where the moose called from, and he's like, you guys set up right here. I'm going to go straight away from you guys in the woods and appear that I'm further away. Get this moose to step right out in this logging road, and you're going to get a shot. Exactly what happened. And the moose is right there. I mean, 10 feet. And locks up. I'm thinking, okay, he ain't the biggest moose in the world. It's day five, uh, once in a lifetime, bow's in my hand, point blank. Middle of the morning, I'm gonna burn him if he comes out. But he didn't. Moose smelt a rat, something was up. He turned and walked straight away from us and stayed out at about 40 yards and I never got a shot. I'm like, damn. But cannot let that guard down. Have to be on it all the time because the minute you think, ah, I'm gonna lay back here and you know and kind of chill and I'll see it coming in. It's gonna step right on top of you, be at 10 yards, it'll be a world record moose, and you won't even have your release on the deal. So uh, we walk down this logging road and Lee's like, we've had a lot of moose encounters in here. It's like, like a, where they logged and clear cut and he's like set up right there. So uh, I said, look, you guys find a spot behind me. What a better way for me to be able to set a straddle of a log, have my bow right here and the logging road wide open. This is starting to rule. I mean, this is, if we're gonna kill a moose, this is where we're gonna kill a moose. I mean, this is the best spot I've been in yet. So we're set, bow's ready. And uh, hopefully we get a moose to come down through here. So I'm sitting there, and Lee is straight away. He's rah, rah, he's calling down there, and uh, you know, same old nothing. And I'm turned around there talking to Matt, and I'm like, "What are y'all doing?" Matt's like, "I'm showing Seth the footage from me. He didn't get a chance to see the footage." I'm like, "Okay." So whatever. We've done this a hundred times now, and nothing's happened. And I see Seth's face I go from here to. What could be the worst thing that could happen while Seth and Matt are back there coon fingering in the play mode? Look at this footage, that moose was standing right on top. What could happen? I didn't even think about it, dude. I just hooked the release to the D loop, drew the bow back behind a little pine tree I got. I don't see anything. And just a split second later, I see this giant rack. He starts to come down the road. I got the pins right on him. Matt's like, wait. I'm like, what? Oh my God, this moose, I'm gonna kill it and I ain't gonna have it on camera. The one time this has happened to us is gonna be right now. So I'm following him, following him, following him. Matt never says a word. And the moose is walking and I got a tree right here. My last shot opportunity before we lose him. Got him. Cut the shot, dead center moose, jacked him. Got me a magnum moose. Double lung, because that's the way I run. Moose of a lifetime, that's a 60 inch moose. But I don't even want to turn around and say those words. Do you have it? Did I hear somebody say wait? Yeah, no, I got him. I was just looking for footage. Oh, God, don't do that. No. We're not going to lose this moose. I made the best possible shot I could. Lee put me in the spot. Seth seen it, so now it's crunch time. Let's go get our moose. Holy crap. Thing is giant. Dead center. Man, we've been through some adverse conditions, but this has been a dream of mine for years, and uh, I can tell both of you I can never repay you for what you did for me. Uh, I can try. But this is a this is a once in a lifetime thing for me. And uh, Seth, dude, I don't even know what to say to you. I mean, nah, it was a it was a pleasure uh, spending a week in camp with you, man. So it took a team effort to get this done. But I want to focus on Seth for a minute. What kind of a guy does it take? Been in the draw for 18 years and put me on as the hunter of this once in a lifetime main moose tag. 
Unbelievable, man. I still cannot believe it. So this is what it takes after you get the moose shot to get him out of the woods. This many folks. So uh, now the work begins. Think about this. We're not trying to load a 300 pound animal in the truck. We're talking about an animal that's gonna weigh a thousand pounds or a little less field dressed. And it takes a lot of teamwork. It takes an old plastic truck bed liner with holes cut in it, chains, snatch blocks, winches. We went through the whole thing. The easy part was done. I told my man, hey, I shot it. But now we gotta get him out. That's another story. Winter's here and it's some hide up here. Bark. Get in there and bark. Bark. So we got a lot of guys there. I'm gonna thank that whole team of guys that was there. We drug this thing out, loaded it, got it up there, got it on the trailer, took it into town. We get over there and I see some more names on the board and you couldn't even talk to me at that moment. I said, how many's on here? 160 something? How many did you say? They bow killed? Oh, none? I'm the only one? What's that name say right there? That'd be P-I-G-M-A-N from, oh, where? I'm from Texas. All I see is main, 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 uh-uh. T and X. That's where I'm from. I came up here, I came, called and shamed. Anyway, it's a big bull moose and uh, we got it done with the bow, so uh, I tell you what, I always want to do it my whole life and there he is. Thank you there, Seth. No problem. I tell you, Seth, it's either he's the greatest guy in the world or I'm gonna have to take Seth pig hunting for the rest of his life. Mm. Oh, yeah.